Welcome back in Miss Sari's class and today we are going to talk about the life cycle of plants. Okay? But before we move further, we need to know about why do plants reproduce? Why do the plants uh, produce a new plants, produce a baby plants? So let's find out about this. All right. So living things do not live forever. Yeah, whatever it is, whether it's human or animals or um, maybe even living creators and plants as well. So that, because living things do not live forever, to ensure the survival and continuity of their own kind, this one, they need to reproduce. So, to ensure that they are still exist on earth, so they need to reproduce. We need to keep in our mind we need to highlight about this one so reproduction i mean like the reproducing process is done because the living creator need to ensure the survival and continuity of their own kind right because now we are going to talk about the plants so before we move further we need to know that actually plants consist of two kinds yeah the first one is flowering plants, which means that the plant itself uh, produce flowers and from the flowers it will produce seeds, right? And these flowering plants will go through a life cycle also and then it will reproduce so sexually starts from it is the pollination process until it is dispersed, yeah? And in contrast with non-flowering plants, non-flowering plants do not produce the seeds yeah so it doesn't have flowers and it also doesn't produce the seed okay so let's check it let's us check all right most plants reproduce from seeds yeah so most of the flowering plants they produce seeds but however there are some that do not reproduce from seeds some other plants which not reproduce from seeds are reproduced by spores by buds and also the leaf margin how is it like let's check this out some samples of plants which produce spores to reproduce are fern algae and moss well these kind of plants are very familiar in our environment so let's take a look uh, how the spores look like let's see the sample of the fern the spores of the fern is located at the back side of the leaves so this is how it looks like and if we look closer it will look like this look at this so th these are the box of spores and inside there are spores powder so once it is ready it will explode and the spores will disperse far from its parents plants it's far from its parent plants next we have buds i believe that you have already familiar with these two plants the first one is potato if you see these black dots these are actually the buds of potato so if you put the potato on the soil the new plants will grow from this part and so with the ginger Look at the ginger. You can see this part on the ginger. So these are the buds of the ginger. A new plant will grow from the buds of the ginger. Of course, if you plant the ginger. Next one is leaf margin. Some plants like bryophyllum, they grow their new plants from the leaf. So if you take the leaf and then you put it on the soil, it will grow into a new plant from the sides of its leaves. So those are three methods that the non-flowering plants has to reproduce. The first one, what was that? Spores, buds, and also the leaf margin. Now, let's continue. We are going to talk about flowering plants and how they reproduce. As what I said earlier, that a life cycle is a process starts from 
uh, living creators entering the life until it is died. And so does with the flowering plants. The flowering plant starts from the seed, now become the seedling, young plants, adult plants, adult plant with flower and fruit and produce the seed while the adult plant will be die, but the seed will produce another plant. So it will goes and goes and goes and that is the life cycle of flowering plants, right? So let's check. We are going to check first how is the seed of the flowering plants. Now here I present the two pictures of the seed. This one is the illustration while the other one is the real seed. But let us compare between these two. The first part we need to know is this part. This part is called embryo. So the embryo is tiny baby. It's an immature plant which later on will grow into a new plant. So it, this embryo can grow if it gets enough nutrients. So where the embryo gets the nutrients? Of course from the seed leaves. The seed leaves, the seed leaves is this part. So the seed leaves contain nutrients that is needed by embryo to grow. And there's also the seed coat. The seed coat is the outer covering of the seed so it protects the seeds from drying out. So these three main parts of the seed is very important to make a new plant. That's why if the seed is broken, it cannot grow into a new plant. Next, before a seed becomes a plant, it will undergo a process called germination. What is actually germination? So the germination is the process from the seed becomes the seedling, right? So, if we plant a seed, before it becomes a seedling, before it becomes a, a plant, there's a germination process. So how is the germination process? When we put the seed into the soil and then with the presence of air, water and warmth, the seed will grow into the seedling. But we remember only if the requirement fulfilled. What are the requirements? These three. These are the right conditions for a seed to become a seedling, right? But a seed does not require the presence of light to germinate. Can you imagine if it needs a light? When it is planted on the soil, it doesn't get the light. How it will grow? Now, we know that the germination process needs these three conditions. For that reason, we are going to do an observation about this. So we need to prove whether it's correct or not. So we are going to do three observations. I'm going to show you how to do this and then later on, you need to do it by yourself. For this observation, you need to prepare for 6 cups, 6 aqua cups, and I prefer you use the used one to reduce the using of plastic cup. And also you need to prepare for some sufficient amount of cotton, the beans, and here we are using the green beans, water, and also don't forget to prepare for papers for label the samples. Next, don't forget to write uh, the name or the label for its sample. And here we start with the water for germination. So we are going to label them with X and Y. Then we stick it to the plastic cup. So for water for germination, we just use two cups. Which the first cups will be for Y and the other one X. The Y is for the dry cotton, while X is for the wet cotton. And here they go. Next, we put the cotton into each of the cups. Just add 
sufficient amount of cotton so make sure the base is covered and then we add the seeds into each cup we add five seeds into each cup the number of the seeds in each cup is very important because the number of the seed is also one of the variable to make it a fair test after both of the cup are filled with the same number of seeds then we add some drops of water make sure it's only damp not really wet make sure you add the water into the sample of the wet cotton not into the dry cotton and then put them in a corner and just let it sit for seven days don't forget to observe them daily so in the next observation again we need to write down the label name here we're going to do to test whether the warmth is important for germination so after we write down the label then we stick it directly into two other uh, cups so we have sample y and sample x while sample y will be put in the corner of the room and sample x will be put inside the refrigerator then we add five again remember the number of the seeds must be similar or must be same yeah because we need the fair taste and uh, the one who is put in the corner will be used as the sample i mean as the control so then we add the water because both of them need to be damp just uh, make it damp so it's just some drops make sure it's not really wet and then sample x which is which need to be put in the refrigerator we put it inside the refrigerator and the other one sample y just put somewhere inside the corner let it sit there and observe for seven days <music> lastly similar with the other two procedures we need to make the label uh, we are going to find out whether the germination need light or not so we stick it to the two cups and then add the cups with the sufficient amount of cotton where sample x will be placed in a dark drawer so it will have very little light and sample y will be placed near the window so it gets enough light then after we add the cotton add some amount of water and then add the seeds again five seeds for each because we want a fair test Next, uh, let us put the sample X in a dark drawer and sample Y near the window to get enough sunlight. So let it sit for 7 days and observe them again daily. And do not forget to write down the date when it is started and when it is finished later. So these are the procedures that you need to do to observe whether first the seed needs the warmth to germinate and the second whether the seed needs the light to germinate and the third whether the seeds needs the warmth to germinate so that is our observation about germination process and see you in my next class bye everyone